Welcome back to the Bearded Garage. Looks like right now we're going to be working on the fuel filter, which is that silver canister right there. In order to do that, I think we're gonna need a, well, a new one. Two 19, I think these are both 19s. Two 19 millimeter uh, open end wrenches and uh, a Phillips uh, screwdriver. And then we're gonna do a couple other things so we can prep for putting the motor back in the car. All right, here we go. All right, we're gonna try taking this fuel filter out. One of the things we have to do is we actually have to hold, I believe we hold this. We counter hold this while we turn the fuel line. Now, I do have handy here. Oh, that broke pretty easy. Um, I do have handy a rag, because I don't like getting gas all over the floor. So I'm just gonna tuck that up under here. I'm hoping there's not a lot of fuel left, but we'll see real quick, I guess. All right, that was pretty simple. We got one undone. Just undo the back one. All right, so I lied before. Uh, these two nuts are 19. Uh, back in the back here, the one on the filter is a 19, and the one behind it on the flare nut is a 17 so just uh grab a 17 it gets a little bit easier there you go there we go now i knew fuel was going to come out i just had to break it free in order for it to start leaking so let me find something to catch this all right well i got this plugged with my finger i'm just going to try undoing it see if i can get it out of here Save me a little bit of a hassle. Normally I don't undo these all the way. This one's got no room to come out, so it's like that's what I'm trying. There we go. There we go. So now the fuel filter is out. And if you look, you can see there is an arrow, a flow arrow going that way. So we're gonna make sure we do that when we put it back in. Another simple step. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm not super anal about making sure everything here is perfect. However, one thing I'm gonna be doing is, uh, you know, before I put stuff back in, I just wipe it down. Um, you know, this is the nice engine bay and I can probably make it nice and shiny. Doesn't need to be perfect, but just a little bit better is how I roll. So I'm gonna go through and actually clean up the inside of the bay here before I put this back together. Here I'm just using some Windex and a couple of detail brushes. There's no secret, no secret to this part. Just to uh, scrub a little bit, squirt a little bit. I'm using Windex because it's, uh, it's not gonna damage anything and I wouldn't mind this shining up a little bit. So takes a couple minutes, um, wipe it down. Doesn't need to be perfect, just make it look pretty.
What we're gonna be using to put back in fuel filter is this male or molly, however you pronounce it. This is obviously a brand new one. So we'll pull this out. Looks like that is exactly how she goes back in. So we're gonna put that back in there. You can see the base a little bit cleaner. And then we're gonna probably gonna take down this, this foam pad in the back. And that took two minutes, but it looks like we got it. Hope too soon. Before we tighten this down fully, let's just make sure that she's these nuts are tight. And do the same on this side. We'll tighten this in place. And last thing we're gonna do in the engine bay today is we're gonna place this foam pad on the back here. It is falling apart. It is cracked it is very hard it should be soft foam so show you what the new one looks like All right here Four. nice and soft we're going to replace that and i'll show you how to get it out now i think it's probably more of a pain or it looks like more of a pain than it is hopefully but mostly We've got these, these screws holding it in place. And we've got, uh, looks like one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like total throughout. I'm gonna go through and take those out and see what we got. In case you're wondering how to get these little caps out, um, I think they're the same things that actually hold the floor mats in. They're literally just plastic. Oops, plastic threaded caps. So if you just push up on them, you can actually twist them pretty easy. And they unthread. That's it. Simple as that. So do it for all 10, and uh, this should be, uh, should start coming out. All right, we've got all nine or 10 of these uh, clips out. No, we also need to take this one out. So okay, so simple screwdriver or a plastic screw comes out oops comes out pretty easy um, now you're gonna find as you start to pull this down it's got a little bit of adhesive behind it you have to slowly work it off wear some gloves when you're doing it don't do it like I'm doing it and uh, slowly peel it back Fortunately, there's an easy way to get this out. Um, you need to uh, take your car down to the dealer and <laughs> have them do it. Short of that, take your time, slowly start peeling apart. You'll find it's really sticky as hell. Uh, and just slowly pull it back. As we slowly pull it back, um, we'll see there's actually notches cut out. So if you can see over in the corner here, uh, same with this corner here. There's actually notches cut out, and those notches are cut out to go around the hinges. And they're only actually on the top side. So 
I'm going to get the bottom side. I think we have to undo the hinge and slide it through. So we'll see once we get the whole thing out. Yeah, there's no trick to this. I uh, slowly peeling it apart. Uh, it's sticking to my gloves. It's sticking to my hands. It's sticking to everything it touches. So just slowly work it out. As you can probably see, this is a pretty messy job. Uh, there is apparently a lot of adhesive used in this, or it's just melted to the inside of the car over the last 25 years. Uh, I am going to keep changing gloves here uh, because they've my gloves are sticking pretty bad. Uh, I'm just going to get another set and keep it on going. I'd rather have it stuck to gloves than stuck to hands. So I'm going to stick my hand down behind that and slowly keep peeling it apart so I can get the whole piece out. Um, I'm trying to get it out so I can actually see and make sure that the way I expect it to go back in is the way it goes back in, or the new one goes in, I should say. The last thing uh, catching this in place is actually a, looks like an eight mil bolt in the back left there. Um, and then, yeah, I did rip it in half. Now that I see how it goes back together, um, I'm just trying to get it out as, as quickly as possible. Here is what the engine bay looks like without that uh, foam dampener before I've cleaned everything up. Uh, as you probably watched, um, I did rip it in a couple pieces as I was pulling it out. Uh, there is the old one right there. So you can see the pieces on the right that are ripped. Um, two or three observations. One, um, it does look like when it goes back in, I'm going to have to pull the rear pin out of the shock that holds up the, uh, uh, that holds this deck lid open. So, um, I just decided to rip it around it. I don't need to do that on the way out because it doesn't really matter. Um, it slides around the front, but it does not slide around the back. You have to, it looks like you have to put it through. Um, and then I had some mouse, uh, looks like some, it must be a mouse. I don't see any turds in there, but I do see a lot of, uh, a lot of shavings there on the floor that I pulled out. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this up. Probably go through, clean up the bay a little bit more. See if I can find an easier way to get this back in. Cause it was kind of a nightmare over in this corner behind all these wires. So I'll try getting all this apart and then show you what I got. The next problem I ran into was uh, there's a wire in the back here that I couldn't seem to get out and I just kind of tore the piece around it. Um, it. Looks like this is actually like a form of a zip tie, but it is just pressed in place. So take a screwdriver, you can actually pop that off. So I'm gonna keep it off now. We can put the mat back in place, the, uh, the foam back in place, and, and then just press this back in place, hold the wire there. Here's the foam we're replacing. Uh, looks like it'll be black side out, right? Foam on the inside. And uh, and this will be the top. You can see, because it's a finished edge, no finish edge down here. So we're gonna try sliding this back in, see what we got. Oh, and for anyone doing this, uh, that goes up around the top. There are holes, what it looks like for, um, I'm gonna undo the shocks that hold the deck lid up. Um, same as the other side. Um, unfortunately, the only other holes in it are what appear to be these slots. I'm not sure what they're for. Um, there are no holes in the rest of it for where the screws go. I think you just punch them through once, uh, once you get it lined up. All right, I'm going to start the install of this uh, foam pad. You'll notice that uh, <laughs> I could not get all of it off. And uh, it actually doesn't matter what I use to get it off. I actually tried pulling it off uh, dry. It was kind of a pain in the butt. I tried actually a little bit of Windex, and it actually started taking... Um, like the paint off so at least the uh, the inside of the the cloth was actually becoming blue so I said you know what I can live with what's in there I don't want to make it any worse so here we go I'm gonna put this together all right so it turns out this is a little bit more of a pain in the ass than I thought it was gonna be I'm gonna have to prop the lid up here because uh, once you get um, 
once you go to take off the the hinges, the lid's gonna fall on your head while you try to put the foam in. So we're gonna, we're gonna try this again. Right, here we go. We are going to, now that we got that in place, we're gonna probably pull in the pin here. Hopefully this will all just come out. All right, so I'll put these in my pocket. Looks like the easy way to do this is to put this in, and you can put it in place on one side by figuring out where the bottom hinge goes. So you start in the bottom corner and go from there. And flashlight stick. Unfortunately, my flashlight keeps going out, but I'm going to show you what I got. So, um, when I told you the two slots that were on the table when I actually showed you this pad, turns out the slots on the side, they actually slide right in here. So, um, that the uh, the end piece here, that's actually for that wire. So, um, it looks like I can't get it through there unless I disconnect and pull it all the way back. Um, and I'm looking, that's... That's too much comfort for me, so I'm actually just gonna pull this corner off and wrap it around. So that is how I'm doing it. Now I'm gonna try piece it in the other side. All right, I got it all back together. Um, you can see how it looks. There is absolutely no secret to getting this in other than patience and slowly sliding it back behind the parts over here. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of, couple of tips if that's gonna help. The, uh, the way you line it up, um, the way you line it up is actually there are two slots. There's a slot here. You actually just push it right inside of this, this piece. So take this off um, and then line up this black mat with this and then line it up again. Same on the other side. So you can see how it's got the slots in it. So and slide it all the way into where it'll fit. There is, other than that, um, it just takes, uh, it takes a while of figuring um, but if you have to line it up here and you have to line up the other side, you get a pretty nice fit all the way around. So um, that's about as simple as it is. After looking at how everything went in, I think uh, the only thing I'm going to do is I understand now why there was some adhesive right here. It's actually a little soft. So um, you can see it touches here. There's metal, but right here it's soft. So I'm probably going to undo one, uh, two and uh, hit a little bit of spray adhesive right there just to keep it up so it doesn't fall down on me. Last thing I'm gonna do in this engine bay, and now we put the motor back in is, uh, so you know, it was warned me a long time ago, anytime you see what looks like a ground, I'm gonna unscrew it and I'm gonna buff it, make sure that I got good contact there because uh, anytime you have electrical problems, it's probably a ground, so. Let's do that before we put the motor back it's in. A little loose. So the ground nut here for the connection is uh, looks like 10 mil, and she was loose. So at a minimum, this is probably good we're doing this. All right, so we'll just clean that up. Make sure that's. Uh, Nice and fresh and should be good to go. All right, well, take this apart, pull that off. Get our brass brush in here. All right, 
same for the copper. Just brush that up and hook her back up. Use a little bit of electronic cleaner on there with the fast, the fast drying stuff. And should be good. All right, that is our engine bay ready to go. It's got a new fuel filter. It's got a new uh, foam pad, and now we got the uh, the ground cleaned up. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning into the Bearded Garage. Don't forget to smash that like button. Uh, hit subscribe if you want to see what's coming next, which is the motor going back in. And, uh, and don't forget, America. See you next time.